All right, everyone, TDS knows no bounds. There's plenty of fear-mongering to go around. We've got another example here. Thankfully, it's a humorous one. It comes from Joy Bahar of The View, of course. Uh, the other day, she was uh, rambling about uh, if Trump is re-elected, saying, oh my God, if Trump gets back into office, he might take us off the air. And I was thinking to myself, quite the opposite is actually true. The reality is that uh, the view is completely irrelevant if Trump, you know, were to croak today. Uh, they would have nothing to talk about. <laughs> they wouldn't have anything to bitch and complain about. Trump derangement syndrome has become such a uh, macrocosmic sort of, of nexus of material that literally anything Donald Trump says is easy fodder to be spun and then to be made a humor of. Uh, or to be condemned by those who suffer from TDS and worship at its altar. I guess if, if Trump were not there, like if he magically disappeared or he decided to teleport to Mars today and said, fuck it, the only thing that they would have to complain about, they'd have to complain about Trump's family or Trump's legacy. So 10 years from now, you'd still be getting like uh, SNL skits about Donald Trump, you know, being, of course, fat and ignorant and orange and things like that. I guarantee that the people at The View, and we spoke about this on the Quarterings broadcast last night, but I definitely wanted to make a one-off video about this as well, because <laughs> it's my forte. Uh, I, I guarantee that in the privacy of the ballot box, at least a couple members of The View will vote for him. They're actually hoping for him to be re-elected. In the absence of Donald Trump, uh, there, there's a, an entire industry of Trump derangement syndrome at this point. From the censorship industry to so-called entertainment, you know, Kathy Griffin, what do you know her from? I know her for the picture with the Trump head. That's the only reason I know she exists. Um, fucking Stephen King, who barely even writes anymore. I mean, not that he needs to, since he's made probably hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, if he weren't shitposting on Twitter about Trump, you know, uh, on the day that Trump does die, uh, these people are going to have one last field day and say, like, good riddance and orange man bad and stuff like that. And then probably, I mean, it's, it's difficult to figure out what they're going to talk about. There's a great example of this basic uh, tendency. Look at the Krasenstein brothers, Ed and Brian Krasenstein. They were Trump reply guys, got banned from Twitter because they were botting, allegedly, on Trump's page, actually, in order to reply as quickly as possible to drive uh, clicks. And Trump's no longer on Twitter. He no longer uses it. He uses Truth Social. What have they devolved into? Uh, posts that get like 1 100th the engagement, as before. Uh, they've, been, they've devolved into supplying random commentary on random issues that nobody gives a fuck about. They typically get ratioed, and it's like the funniest thing ever. When Trump was there, there was at least some degree of relevance, but only framed in the context of Trump being there. If Trump is absent from politics, let's say he disappears, so to speak, he loses the election, Biden is reelected. Number one, the economy probably collapses, uh, and we probably end up in World War III, so it probably doesn't matter. But uh, number two, The View and groups like that, Jimmy Kimmel, half of his material would no longer be there. The Krasensteins would lose all hope for existence. These people have sort of a frenemy relationship with Donald Trump. While they don't like him on an ideological basis, he makes them a boatload of money. And that's the long and short of it. Uh, Joy Bahar is completely wrong. An inversion of reality, uh, as we often see with TDS sufferers, the reality is that Donald Trump is not uh, going to put people in camps or uh, take your show away. Biden's already doing that to various uh, figures uh, online. He's the one that's more likely to put people in camps. I would note that the last time that a U.S. president decided to uh, uh, jail a bunch of people for no reason was FDR, who's upheld as one of the greatest U.S. presidents for winning World War II, even though he really, that's not really a thing. Uh, <laughs> that, that's not truth. That's not actually historical. Uh, you're, you're looking more at Churchill and people like that and uh, Patton when you're talking about that. And there's a reason Eisenhower was elected and Patton was probably assassinated, by the way. Look at their differential foreign policy for a reason why. Uh, the, the view is not going to go anywhere if Trump is reelected. Actually, they'll have more ratings. 
because then there will be something to talk about. In his absence, I think the view collapses and probably gets taken off air. There are only so many network, uh, networks that can be dedicated towards far-left talking points anyway. Well, when you have lightning rod Trump in the mix, it helps boost them a little bit. The legacy media may still be dying, the left-wing legacy media, but by and large left-wing, and the missing link media. As far as so-called entertainment, yeah, people like to watch morning shows and stupid shit like that. I don't, but a lot of people do. I don't fully understand it. I'd rather put on a bunch of uh, music in the background or something like that for my morning routine. Of course, then I have to listen to myself speak, you know. I've, I've got a, a voice for silent movies and a face for radio, I always say. So it can be a little bit annoying having to look at myself here on the webcam. Uh, the view will be fine. Don't worry about it. Although this would be a resounding reason to vote for Donald Trump, if indeed it were true that he was going to come in and, you know, force the view off the air through, I don't know, lawfare of some sort. If he were to pull a Biden on the view, it'd be fucking hilarious. I wouldn't support it and condone it because, of course, I don't believe in that kind of legal persecution. But it would still be a, tra a, a tragic but IR ironic. It would still be a humorous to some degree. Don't worry, Joy. If Trump uh, doesn't win re-election, that's when you have to worry. You have to worry about the fact that the View's uh, audience will dwindle and they won't be able to have as many people on and maybe you're one of the people that gets cut from the panel, actually. That's about all. Peace out.